Hi, I'm Kelly Chase and this is History Detective. And today I'm looking at the woman who is celebrated on our 10 domino note, teacher, poet and social activist, Dame Mary Gilmore. Mary Jean Cameron was born in New South Wales in 1865. Mary Gilmore is a very interesting woman. She spent her whole life helping people and being a voice for people in underprivileged communities. Interesting, she was also the great great aunt of former Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Mary went to school in Wagga Wagga and at 16 years of age she became a trainee teacher but she failed her teacher's exam and the next year she took a year off but then showing true resilience she tried again and worked as a teacher until 1895. The problem was that the Department of Public Instruction had very strict rules concerning what teachers could speak openly about. And because she had a passion for writing about social justice issues, this posed a problem. So during this period, she protected her teaching career by using pen names. But instead of diving into her social activism, I want to pause and look at a quirky little chapter in Mary's very long life, where she decided to become a devotee of the new Australian movement. Basically, the New Australia Movement was a group of progressive-minded colonists from Australia who believed that there should be a utopian, classless society. It was spearheaded by a chap called William Lane, who ran a newspaper called The Worker. Mary was quite in awe of William, and after meeting him, she wrote in her journal that he was earnest, strong in conviction, generous and tender-hearted. She explained that some men help to bring out the best in you and that he was a man whose utter kindliness abides. It is good to have been touched by his hand. Needless to say, she was a big fan. At this time in history, there were a lot of union movements forming to fight for the fair treatment and fair wages of workers. William Lane had an idea that he could start fresh and set up a new socialist society where everybody was equal. Rather than fixing the inequality problems in Australia, they would start fresh in the new Australia. It even had its own currency. They decided that Paraguay in South America would be the perfect spot to set up this new Australia colony and 400 people moved there to start living this utopian life. Mary Gilmore was among those people. With her teaching experience, she was going to teach in the new Australian school. Spoilers, this ideal society was kind of problematic and didn't work out. The trouble started as early as the boat ride over there and developed into even more severe troubles over the course of time. About two months in, three men were expelled from the community for drinking alcohol because New Australia was a temperance society, which meant it was an alcohol-free zone. 81 of the settlers didn't even last the first few months. Then, because there were so many grievances about the way that William Lane was running the colony, he decided to start a breakaway settlement called... Cosme. During this period, Mary was doing a lot of the writing and correspondence about the success of the new Australia colony and having it sent back to Australia to be published. I assume these writings were meant to encourage like-minded people to immigrate to New Australia. It is important to note that when Mary moved to the colony, she was 30 years old and still single. This might seem okay now, but back then it meant that she was probably going to be a spinster forever. She wrote that her options were the desolate regions of old maidism, the devil, or marriage and probable misery. But she was secretly a romantic and also wrote, My being craves for the more substantial food of married life. In the new Australia colony, she met her husband, an ex-sheep shearer, Will Gilmore, who has been described as a fine, sturdy, lovable man. He had actually injured himself in the colony while saving some children, and Mary was tasked with reading to him while he recovered from his injuries. They were married, they had a child, and when the new Australia colony was on the verge of collapse, they moved back to the old Australia. Upon her return, she acquired a job writing and editing a woman's column for the Australian worker, and she stayed in this job for more than 20 years. It did not pay particularly well, but she supplemented her income with other forms of writing. One of those was poetry, and in her lifetime, she published eight 
books of poetry and more than 800 poems. But Mary didn't keep all of the profits from the sales of her poetry. After World War I, she wrote a book of poetry called The Passionate Heart and she donated all of her royalties from the sale of the book to the returned soldiers who had been blinded in the war. Her writings were a voice for the underprivileged, returning soldiers, Aboriginal people, children in the welfare system and women fighting for equal rights. In 1937, she became a Dane and was awarded the Commander of the Order of the British Empire, the first Australian to be granted the award for services to literature. Upon her death in 1962, she lived to 97 by the way, she was given a state funeral. A state funeral is a public ceremony that is paid for by the state government in order to honour people who are of great national significance. Don't forget to hit subscribe and in the description below you'll find a link to my website where you'll find a list of references and links to teaching resources. This is Kelly Chase on The Case. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this video is being recorded today. I pay my respects to the elders and knowledge holders past, present and emerging.